Mark Lander. Welcome to part two of paper making. So welcome to the Port Hills of Christchurch. And this is an area around the city where I live. And when I left art school, I used this area as my stamping ground, my patch. And I'd come up here every day to do paintings, watercolours, um, studying composition, colour, um, building up my skills, and as you can see, it's quite a wild, rugged area. And I bought every kind of paper I could find in the art shops, and but I could never really find the paper that suited me. It was either too rough or too smooth. It was either too absorbent or not absorbent enough. And then someone mentioned to me that paper is just plant fibre. And with that tiny piece of information has led me on a 30 year journey exploring hand paper making. So I began to look around here and I thought, oh, what plants could I use? And one stood out. And you can see it here growing up on the cliff. This is called Harakiki or New Zealand flax. So when the early settlers came to New Zealand, they thought, oh, this looks like linen flax. But it's not linen flax at all. It's a member of the lily family. And to the Maori people of New Zealand, it's the plant of life. They used it to make their clothes, ropes, fishing nets, anything you use fibre for, they used harakiki. And I found that the leaves of the harakiki plant uh, make a beautiful cream paper and even the old dried leaves around the base of the plant, they make a beautiful brown paper. So we are going to go in a minute and harvest some. So we'll go down into the valleys, up here in the mountains it grows quite small. But when it go, you go down into the valleys, it begins to get a very large plant. So we'll go harvesting, um, come and have a look, it's quite fun. And uh, yeah, join me in a minute. Here we are down in a flax swamp. And as you can see, when their feet get into the um, wet areas, these plants grow seven, eight, ten feet high. They are incredible, incredibly big, vigorous plants. And just one of these leaves will make a sheet of paper seven feet wide and twelve feet long. So, before you cut the bush, cut any leaves off, it's customary to say a little prayer or a karakia and it's a prayer of thanks and certainly it's a wonderful resource and something good to be really really thankful for. So a little prayer, so you can see the fan here and in the centre is the little baby leaf, that's the baby. On either side of that is the two parents, there. And then the grandparent, great-grandparent, great-great-grandparent, great-great. And you don't touch that part. So you leave the, the plant growing. But you can harvest these older leaves. Just by slicing down like this. And so on. I keep going till I've got a good truckload. So there it is, New Zealand flax or harakiki.
We now have um, our bath full of uh, flax, and this is an old, an old ena uh, iron enameled bath. And uh, underneath, I'm putting a gas stove, and I'm now going to be adding caustic soda. And caustic soda is what I use to dissolve the glue that holds that plant together. So you imagine all the fibres are glued together and the caustic soda dissolves those glues enabling the fibre to be pulled to bits. So um, you can use soda ash which is a slightly milder version of caustic soda. Some people actually pour boiling water through wood ashes and let it drip through and that's a caustic -y, soapy uh, solution. So caustic soda you have to be quite careful of. Um, it, you need eye protection and also wear gloves while you're using it. Gloves on. And to a bath load, I add three two litre containers full. Always add caustic soda to cold water, otherwise, you get a steam explosion. Don't worry, that wasn't an actual steam explosion, that was a hot pools at Rotorua, New Zealand. And then hose it in. Right, you can see our flax is now cooked. After four or five hours of simmering, um, the caustic soda has worked on that plant. And when it's cooked, you can separate those fibers by pulling them across the grain. And um, after a thorough washing, uh, it's ready for the pulping process. Well, that concludes part two of paper making with Mark Lander. So, I put on the end of this video some other plants to consider. There are tussocks, there are grasses, there is such a thing as the New Zealand cabbage tree. Um, some of these plants are good. Some of them are quite tough and not so great, but it's the experimenting which is the exciting part. Um, in part three, we'll be learning about pulping. So taking your cooked up plant material, pulping it up, and also the construction of vats and simple moulds and decals. So yeah, have a have a look out for part three. So we'll see you then. Okay, bye.